This year we're excited to be celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Multisonic Strainer System. The Multisonic Strainer System is a strainer system that allows you to add and subtract different types of cables and wires from your snare drum to achieve different uh, sound timbres from a single drum. Ludwig Super Sensitive had this parallel system where each individual strand had its own separate tension. Like each strand has its own separate tension, which you could do with a little screwdriver. I probably messed around with it more than what I should have because <laughs> it's kind of a finicky little system and uh, wasn't always sure if I was kind of screwing the drum up, but it's my first drum that I ever had, so that I save it. So, and then another drum I was aware of was called the Ludwig Twin Parallel, and that had two little levers, each with its, with its own snare system under the head. So you could take out one, you can take off the other, you could put both on, you could put both off. That was an early idea, uh, one of many that Ludwig had that was you know, way ahead of its time. And so that was the first time I'd ever seen the little multiple lever system was on the Ludwig Twin Parallel. Further down the road, I started thinking about these independent systems, different snare units, thick cable, thin cable, curly wire, guitar strand, that type of thing. Clevelander Drum Company came out with a drum with a system like that. Uh, the system was developed by Tom Freer, Cleveland Orchestra uh, assistant timpanist and percussionist, and it had three different types of uh, wire and cable that were all connected to one single unit. So they all went on and all went off. And there was some adjustment in there, but it was, it was very difficult to ad adjust them. But they were great drums and a lot of adoption of use for them. And then Tom came out with a new idea where it was much easier to adjust these separate systems so that they respond best at their dynamic range where they're active. Like curly wire needs to be looser than cable because if curly wire is the same tension as cable, it doesn't increase your dynamic range because things aren't activating when they should be. So you kind of squash that dynamic range. So that was a good advancement to be able to do that. Then some years down the road, when I started making concert snare drums, that's when I came up with the sound art strainer, the trio strainer. I wanted to make a way where each system was adjustable but wasn't as finicky and it was all integrated into one unit. So that was the original sound art strainer. You had three systems, each with its own individual tension with one lever that took them all on or all off. I'm, I'm always very specific in that I didn't come up with a lot of these ideas of multiple systems or individual adjustment or things like that. I just put my own spin on them, re-realized them in a different form factor. Then people started asking me, can the sound art throw off, trio throw off, can you throw off one or the other individually or in combination? And the answer was no, it's, it's an all or nothing. You put all of them on at the same time or they're all off at the same time. Then it got me started thinking uh, about how would that work to have something that was more effective in actually getting different kinds of stuff on the bottom head, curly wire, guitar strand, uncoated cable, thicker coated cable, thinner coated cable, that type of thing. There was another drum that had come on the market that was very similar to the Ludwig Twin Parallel. So that got me thinking and thinking and thinking, okay, if you want to subtract something, you got to add something. You really need to add something back if you're looking for something with a different timbre. You could do it with four, you could do it with five. I thought five was kind of the, uh, the sweet spot for that. But really there hadn't been anything like it. So that's where I came up with five systems. This nascent idea started a good two years before the actual first solid prototype was made. And I started it as a 
pet project. And that's where quite a few products that we're kind of known for started as just sort of a, hey, let's try this. I hear people talk about market saturation. There's no more ideas. Everything's been thought of. I don't buy into that at all. I think there's always room for improvement. There's always going to be something that comes out that's going to meet someone's need or it's going to meet a new need that hasn't been there before. And someone's going to find that, design it, create it, and people are going to respond to it. But of course, that's, that's the hard thing. When I did my first throw off, so this was the first iteration of the SoundArt Trio Strainer. And it looks a little different because it went through a design change. But the very first one I did, I made it out of wood. Yeah, I risked my fingers on the table saw making this little thing. That was, I remember, that was dangerous. And so then the next thing was a plastic prototype. And after that, we made uh, aluminum prototypes. Now connecting that to the Multisonic, there were never any plastic prototypes or wooden prototypes for that matter. They were already kind of familiar from making this, so they made aluminum prototypes and then it's just a process of working through that and okay this works, this doesn't, and this needs to be adjusted, and that type of thing. The first thing was the width, and I have this old, this old scribbling for the Multisonic to make these things narrow enough so that the whole thing wasn't this wide. Uh, it was a real challenge to get each one moving independently of one another, doing it in a very constrained space. So that took a lot of work to kind of make shrink my thing down so it was a reasonable size and be able to silently turn it on, turn it off. You punch in or pull out the buttons you want, you turn it back on, it's completely silent. And that's, if you've ever played on a stage, you know how one little click can just scream through the hall. The other challenge for me was I was not a CAD computer-aided design computer guy. Everything I used to do was on this graph paper. I would scribble all this stuff and I would make draft drawings, you know. I would give that to my uh, machine shop in Adrian, Michigan, who still makes all these parts for us today. And working with the people there, they helped me along and kind of figured out the stuff I couldn't figure out. I mean, I couldn't tell them how to make this. Nowadays, if you have a little part like the slider unit, you have a 3D rendering, which has all the geometry, everything built in, and you give that file and they pull it in, they create their tool path, the program that actually cuts it. Uh, not back then when I did it, it was all kind of, here's my idea, here's my crappy drawings that probably aren't that great. I couldn't have done it without somebody investing their time into helping. I honestly really didn't have high expectations for this thing, but now 20 years later, people really like it and they find it useful. And I think it did fill a need that, that people had. People certainly had to have a willingness to kind of explore and learn something that's, that's new. Basically, it's like learning a new instrument in itself. All right, so I think we're in our 27th year. So I've been at this a little more than 27 years. We kind of call 1995 the beginning year because it's kind of easy to, for me to remember at this point. But over the years, uh, we've just had so many people that support us and have, you know, longtime friends and artists and, and dealers that got on board early on. They're the reason we're here. Everyone who's making music and out there playing is doing that for the edification of others and for themselves. And for us to be a part of that is a real privilege. One thing I do also want to do is thank the team here because it is not Eric Soy. It is not about me. I couldn't do this. We couldn't do this without each other. So it's a team effort. I don't do it all. I don't maintain it all. And I always want to give credit all around because we can't do it without each other. So big bro hug for Black Swan Percussion. So thanks for uh, listening and happy anniversary.